Cheese. You are listening to Mead and Cheese on Demon FM. I am DJ Mead, joined by DJ Whiskey. Hello. Also known it's as me. Alistair Brown. It's me. Also known as Apollo Nithercott. I'm here. Hello. So, um, Alistair, what brings you on to Mead and Cheese this week? A very important matter. Yes. Very important. It's very near and dear to my heart. The Sutton Sundial. The Sutton Sundial, it, for people who don't know, is the historic landmark in the centre of Sutton and Ashfield's town square. And um, Ashfield District Council are planning to remove it. Which I think is outrageous. It is outrageous. So some fun facts about the sundial. It was built in 1995? Yeah, 95. To uh, commemorate the clockmakers of Sutton in Ashfield um, that used to live there many, many years ago. And it is also the largest sundial in Europe. Used to be a couple of years ago. Someone one up to us, but ours looked better. Our, ours is the most beautiful looking sundial in Europe. Exactly. It looks it looks like a monument. It does, yeah. Um, you know, there have been some proposals that say if you want to get rid of all the time-telling stuff to put down your proposed patches of grass, you could <laughs> at least leave the, the arch. Exactly. Like, just build the grass around the sundial. Yeah. Arc, arc the sundial. Exactly. But, uh, yeah... So we are doing hashtag Save the Sundial as our campaign, and as part of this campaign, Lord Thomas Jackson, DJ Cheese, who is not in the studio with us today because he's in Cornwall trying a lot of different meads, ready for next week's mead reviews, he sent a letter to Lee Anderson, the MP for Ashfield, about the sundial, which um, I am going to read out right now. So, if I can get the letter up, Department of the Chairperson, Lord Thomas Jackson, and then the address for Mead and Cheese, with meadandcheese at gmail.com. The 17th of July 2022. Dear the Right Honourable Lee Anderson MP, I am writing to you to inquire about the Sutton Sundial. I have been informed that Ashfield District Council is trying to get rid of the Sundial. This would be similar to removing the Eiffel Tower from Paris, removing the Statue of Liberty from Leicester, or removing cheese from Mead and Cheese. I haven't had the pleasure of coming to Sutton yet, but I never hear a sentence about Sutton without the word sundial. I'm telling you something very special about it. To remove it would not only be removing a part of history, it would also be removing history yet to be made. Up-and-coming bands like the Nithercott have created songs about the charming and beautiful Sundial, and they are truly the Beatles of Sutton. And as the passage of time goes on, it is now your hour, Lee. This is your chance to make history. I ask that you ensure the Sutton Sundial remains in place and remains in time. Sincerely, Lord Thomas Jackson. It's just, that was beautiful. It really was, wasn't it? Such a poignant message. A a beautifully written letter from Tom. I give it my seal of approval. So, um, speaking of the Nithercots writing songs about the sundial, we're going to play Sutton Sundial, the greatest landmark in the world, by the Beatles of Sutton themselves, the Nithercots. We are back on Demon FM, Mead and Cheese, where we are campaigning to save the Sutton Sundial. You can join in with this campaign on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram or any other social media by using the hashtag SaveOurSundial. So, Alistair. Yes. What is your opinion on the Sutton Sundial? I love the Sutton Sundial. It's It's been a constant throughout my entire life growing up there. And it's it's something I associate heavily with the town. It's it's the focal point. 
I I would agree. Like, I feel like the people who want to get rid of it most are the people who didn't grow up with it. Yeah, the, the people who knew Sutton before the sundial. Mm. But we, we now have a generation such as ourselves who have grown up always knowing the Sutton sundial yeah. being this focal point of the town. Well, whenever I describe where I come from, um, once I've narrowed down the area it's in, I say it's got Europe's former largest sundial. And it people get interested by that. It's it's something to talk about. It's like a it's like the Eiffel Tower of Sutton. Well, that's the thing. The school curriculum when we were going through school um, had a whole section on learning about your local area. Yeah. And what is there to talk about in Sutton but the sundial? Well, we've got the sundial, an old mill that doesn't look like much anymore and is off behind a bunch of uh, houses now because they built around it. Yes. And I believe that the mill is a protected landmark. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they can't get rid of that. But the sundial isn't. The sundial is not, because it's on a uh, Portland Square. Because this is what we were debating um, the other day, where people don't have enough appreciation for modern history. Modern history is severely underlooked. Uh, you think of modern history, most people will jump to the World Wars or the 1960s, but history beyond that, the history of the 2000s and the 80s, 80s onwards basically is severely yeah. underlooked by the majority of people. Because like the windmill is protected because it was built in the 1800s. Yeah. Um, but the Sutton Sundial being built in 95. Everyone's like, oh it's not that long ago, but it's nearly 30 years old. It is, and you know, our generation, we have always known Sutton to have the sundial. Yeah, it's... And that's why I think our generation are the ones who are campaigning the most to keep it standing. Yeah, the, the sundial, to me, feels like the heart of Sutton. I, I would fully agree with that. The Mansfield Chad put out an article about the Sutton sundial and uh, Ashfield District Council's new plans, which um, have proved to be very controversial. <laughs> um, and have split opinion in the town, with many people wanting to keep the sundial, and others not wanting to keep the sundial. Obviously, we are a pro-sundial pro radio sundial. show. Um, but we we will see some of the comments that people have made about the sundial to uh, get more of a, a fuller image yeah. of what the debate around the sundial you have to, you have really to is. hear from all sides. Yeah, I, I agree. And, um, you know, Ashfield District Council, when they put out the video announcing that they were going to get rid of the sundial, so much of the comments were against it. Yeah. Because they said in the video, we did an opinion poll. We asked the people of Ashfield and they all voted to get rid, or the majority voted to get rid of it. And the comment section was filled with people saying, who was asked? Yeah. When when were they asked? When did this happen? Yeah. I have no recollection of this and opinion poll happening. They haven't put up any evidence of there ever being a poll, which is a little bit concerning. Yeah, they haven't released the uh, the results of the poll, which is something that we'd like to see. It is definitely something we'd like to see. I would love to see the uh, Sutton Sundial I'd like to see how many vote. people they asked for, for me I feel like it should have been a local referendum yeah because it's a big thing like it's the main square of the town it's where ev everybody walks through that area and goes to that area if you live in the town and to completely change it up from what it's been for the past 20 and more years more people should have been involved or known about it. More people should care about it. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got the chat article up right now. Um, so let's see what some of the people from the Ashfield area are saying about the sundial. Andy Sales said, So we had a raised planting area that was removed to make way for what we have now. So someone had a light bulb moment. I know, let's have a raised planting area. That would look great. <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong yeah it's just like you can have the raised planting area 
But you don't have to remove the sundial to introduce that. You can build around what's already there. Yeah, Re- Rebecca Morris is uh, on our side. She said, I love the sundial. This makes me really sad. I agree. I agree. That's that's my feelings about it as well. Yeah, I, I, I am the same. When I, when I first heard that they were getting rid of the sundial, I didn't believe they would actually do it. Yeah, I thought it was one of them things where they were considering it and then they'd see the public reaction. Because it, the idea of them removing the sundial has been floating around for a while. Yeah, it's always been something that's been talked about. But it's never been something anyone's really properly considered doing. No. Uh, Charlotte Grace Bilson said, Hopefully not scrapped, but moved elsewhere. The sundial should be in a local park area where it actually gets the sun and would be nice to keep due to its representation of the local clockmakers which used to be in Sutton. That's something I, I can agree with. If you if if they want to sort of reinvigorate Portland Square, change it up, make it more accessible or whatever they're trying to do with it, moving the sundial is a is a good option. Yeah. I, I'm not opposed to them redoing Portland Square. But yeah. I am opposed to the sundial being scrapped. Yeah, scrapping it is a pointless like because it's a, it's a big part of our history now. It's yeah. been there for nearly 30 years. Either moving it to Sutton Lawn, having mm. it on there functioning as it is, as a sun tile, or moving it into a museum somewhere, having it so that it can still be looked at and still be sort of in remembrance of the clockmaking industry that we had. Yeah, uh, I agree, because, you know, to some of these councillors who were around before the sundial. To them, it probably doesn't seem like an important part of our history. Yeah, it's it's something that they put on Portland Square and changed it from what they were used to. Yeah, like if you're a 60-year-old man or woman or, or whoever, and, you know, you've known what Sutton was like before the sundial, you remember when there was a big roundabout there. Yeah, the road used um, to go through there. The sundial was just this thing that was added that made traffic congestion (laughs) but then you've got people like us who you know the sundial has been there for our entire lifetime yeah so to us it's this focal attraction of the town yeah it's something that's always stood stood strong going back to the um, school curriculum argument of course we did have to learn about our local area and one of the main things we were taught about was the Sutton Sundial and how it was at the time the largest sundial in Europe. Yeah, it was a something that brought a little bit of sort of notoriety to the town because after, well, after all the coal mines shut down and a lot of the industry moved away from the area, there was not there's not really much going for Sutton as of right now, and the sundial is something for us to, for the people who live there, to sort of take pride in, be like, we've got a really big sundial, where else can you see that? What other towns have a big sundial instead of, like, a big clock tower? Exactly, because they could have made a clock tower. That would have probably been the most normal choice. choice. Yeah. Yeah. But... Instead, they wanted to do something out of the ordinary. Yeah. And something that would actually set Portland Square apart from other exactly. town squares. It make, makes it stand out when com- when you compare it to other towns. Because ev- every town has, like, a clock tower of some sort most of the time. Like, cities have clock towers as well. Everywhere, there's a big clock, usually, that you can see. Yeah. But also, um, going back to the school curriculum again, part of this learning about the local area in the curriculum uh, was in the ICT curriculum Mm. where we had to create a tourist advert to attract tourists to our local area which was Sutton in Ashfield and I can say with almost 100% certainty that everyone's ad contained the sundial every uh, yeah whenever you're writing or doing something about Sutton the sundial is always featured because of how prominent it is. Yeah. I remember 
when I first moved up to secondary school, uh, we had to create a little sort of emblem or name badge sort of thing to do with it. And I, I put the sundial in as a focal point of it. Yeah, um, we did a Minecraft concert about Ashfield, and one of the attractions that we put at the stage there was also a replica of the sundial. Yeah, because it's... Well, what what did we have in it? We had the, the sundial replica. Yes. The River Idol, which no longer exists. Well, it does exist, but it's a little but trickle it's not underground. Anymore, yeah. And the coal mining industry, which also doesn't exist anymore. And they, they were... The River Idol and the coal mining industry were two of the biggest things that we could think of that used to exist. And then the Sundar was the third one. Yeah, and, you know, there was also the Knots Flags. Yeah, Knots Flags. The Disco Ball. Disco Ball. Which... Um, used to have a disco. Yeah. Explain the Disco Ball. Um, That was just something I thought would make it look nice. But there, there did used to be a a disco in um in Sutton. Um, re- they repurposed the old uh, King Cinema. Uh, after it became a bingo hall, they turned it into a... A, uh, a little disco place for a short while before they turned it into a pub. Nice. That is nice. And, of course, we had Dancing Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing Yoda <laughs> is a staple of Sudden and Nashville. But um, going back to the sundial discussion, let's read more of what people have been saying in the chat. So um, someone said, doesn't say who... The area where the sundial is now would make a nice place for outdoor tables and chairs for use by local cafe customers. Maybe, ideally, under cover with a roof, but roll up sides for nice days. Would need locking overnight, though. Defo something practical should be done with the space to encourage shoppers to the town. See, I think having an outdoor seating area is a good idea because some uh, little cafes that are around the sundial already have seats that they put outside every mm. like during the day they bring them in in the evenings um but i think one of the main issues is that a lot of the shops in the area are closed they don't exist there's yeah. there's not there's not many shops that are there that would attract visitors in i think a, a picnic area would be nice especially for like you know Barry's burger van yeah, and um, other small van the, uh, food kiosks. The jacket potato van that yeah. is down the street. If you had like a little picnic area to sit, um, here in Leicester, actually, near Leicester Market, there is a section where it's filled with picnic tables and it's got a little fence around it. Yeah, there's a nice section in, in York like that as well that's uh, in view of mm. the Minster, which... Sutton could have one in view of the sundial. Yes. But, as as I say, I'm not against redevelopment of Portland Square. Yeah. I am against scrapping the sundial. Yeah, the the sundial shouldn't be scrapped. If it was moved to, say, the bus station... Yeah. um, ...where the fountain used to be... Yeah. ...or if it was moved to Sutton Lawn... It'd work in so many places across the town. Yeah. It would. Um, I think Sutton Lawn's probably the best place for it. Yeah, I mean, there's so much space. There is. They could really put it in a wide open space, so then there's no chance of buildings blocking (laughs) the shadow. (laughs) It'd actually work. Yeah. As a sundial. So, um, the Nithercots, which is, you know, we are two-thirds of the Nithercots. Two-thirds of the Nithercots. But all, all three of us have been working on a protest song. Yeah. Um, to join the campaign to save the sundial, which um, we've been working on for the past week. Yeah. Um, and as I say, all, all three members have contributed in some way. Definitely. To this uh, masterpiece of a protest song. So There's we are now like it. we are now going to play the new single by the Nithercots, it's, it's Save it's Our Sundial. Radio debut. Bane. Bane. 
Harry. <laughs> So, um, you heard our new single, Save Our Sundial, which, um, I must say, I think the part where it, you know, becomes more vocals and less instruments is, yeah. like, quite impactful. I, I like, I like that ending bit that we decided to. <laughs> I, I like, I like, um, Bob's contribution <laughs> to the song. He can't. <laughs> he can't. He can't. <laughs> I love it. It, it. it is, it is great, and of course, you can listen to that song on any streaming service except Spotify because it's not up yet. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be there eventually. But it, it will be there, it in, will be there in a few days probably. Hopefully. We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> not had any issues so far with it. But yes, that was also Mambo Number no. 5 by Bob the Builder. A UK number one hit. It was in September, September 2001. 2001. The week that my brother was born. <laughs> So uh, there you go, some meat and cheese insider information. Yes, we get you all the facts. So, Bob the Builder, he could fix the sundial. He could. He could move the sundial to wherever he wanted to. Because one of the big debates right now about, supposedly, why the council can't move the sundial is that, um, apparently, the top part of the sundial is made out of fibreglass, which is uh, very brittle. And if it was moved, it would um, break. Yeah. So, you know, my suggestion would just be to not move it. <laughs> yeah, but if you have to move it... Be careful. Be careful. Or if it would definitely break, remake it. Yeah, just make it again. Exactly. Keep keep the pillars safe, because I assume they're not fiberglass. They will be made out of some sort of metal, I would assume just, copper. Yeah, replace... Replace the top bit if that's definitely going to break, and put the original bit. Save it as much of it as you can. Put it in a museum. Yeah, put broken pieces of the sundial in a museum. Exactly. I mean, they've they replace historical stuff all the time to keep it safe. They did it all throughout the past, but they kept the original bit safe, and that's in a museum. But no, my suggestion would be to entirely make it out of either metal or stone or yeah. They could even remake it in fiberglass if they, you know, decide not to move it again ever. Yeah. But um yeah, what would your suggestion be for the um the Sundal conundrum? Well, the Sundal conundrum. I feel if it truly has to be moved, if if rejuvenating Portland Square means moving the Sundial, then I would try and move it as safely as as you can. If the sundial will indeed break upon movement, rebuild it. And if that's not possible, then save as much of it as you can and start up a Sutton Museum. Sutton needs a museum. It's got so much history that just... There's barely anywhere to access it. There's places cropping up now which are, they're becoming more and more prevalent among the community. But having a dedicated building... That's a museum all about Sutton, where you can learn about its history. Because there's so much that happened here mm. that's just been sort of forgotten about amongst the general population. My main source of Sutton knowledge and history knowledge mainly comes from the Sutton Living Memory group on yeah. Facebook. Well, that that's an incredible group they've got. Because I, I spoke to them the other day. They've got so much archived and saved all about Sutton. Mm. And... Um, the fact that they opened up a little store in uh, the shopping centre in Sutton, the Idlewell Shopping Centre, uh, and you could just walk in whenever it's open, and they just have volunteers running it, and uh, they'll have, they'll change it every now and then, and they'll put up different displays. Like right now, it's about uh, Jeremiah Brandreth, the last man to ever be beheaded in the UK. Yes. Who uh, came from Sutton? He was from a very fairly well-known family in Sutton, and. Um, I read on the um, the displays that they had that in storage they have the chopping block that was used on the day. They don't have the head. They don't have the head. I, <laughs> I doubt they'd have the head, but I don't. Maybe that maybe someone will find it. Maybe. So, um, Jonathan Allen. Um, this is going back to the chat article to see what people have said about the sundial, and this is something we spoke about off um, off air uh, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jonathan Allen said 
My granddad won the competition for the wording that accompanies the sundial, so I'll be slightly miffed if it just gets ripped up and forgotten about. Exactly. I mean, that is sad, isn't it? It was a community thing. It was a community thing, and, you know, I, I would be even more upset than I am now if, you know, my granddad had something to do with the making of the sundial. Oh, for sure, yeah. Like, it it just... They should try and save as much of it as possible if they, if they really have to move it. Yeah, like, the the stone that is engraved with the words of um, Jonathan Allen's grandfather, that could be put in a museum. Exactly. Like, instead of doing what most small towns do and just getting rid of their history we should be celebrating it we should we should have a museum I, i've been saying it for years we need to focus on our history because sutton um it appeared in the doomsday book in 1086 so there's nearly a thousand years of sutton's history wow and th- like you ask the average person who lives in sutton about the history they'll say yeah we used to have some coal mines and that's their. That's the extent of their knowledge. Yeah. So much happened. There's uh, when I was talking to um, the Living Memory Group the other day. Um, we were talking about all sorts. We were talking about Brandreth and his past. We we're talking about the uh, the coal mining industry, the um, the railway line, because the um, the Mansfield Pinkston railway line is the oldest continuously operating railway line in the UK. Is that the railway line that's no longer there? Um, I can't. I can't recall. I Cause, feel like it might. There was a railway line that ran through Sutton. Yeah, there was. There was that one. And now uh, that one's underground now. Now Sutton's station is in Kirkby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's still a railway line that runs past the um, the reservoir, Kingsmill Reservoir. There's still one that goes near there, mm. and I don't know if that's the um, the Mansfield Pinkston one because I think that still runs to this day. It's a uh, I think in 2019 it celebrated its 200th anniversary of being open. I just think it's weird that Sutton and Ashfield's train station <laughs> is in Kirkby in... and Ashfield. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, who, we... who decided that? Maybe, maybe, maybe that bit of Kirkby used to be Sutton. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a it's a conspiracy. But um, we're also talking about be how there's it. there's evidence of a civil war battle. That took place oh. um, where uh, Sutton Community Academy is currently. There's been evidence of it. And um, I remember he was also talking about, because we'd sort of expanded onto the whole Ashfield area, which, if there was a museum in Sutton, could be focused on the Ashfield area as a whole. I, I think, yeah, you, you would need an Ashfield-wide museum. Uh, because, you know, Ash, Ashfield isn't that big of an area. Yeah, you could easily... Um, have a museum to all and of then it. Ashfield District Council can fund this Ashfield Museum. Yeah, whether it goes in Sutton or Kirkby or Huffway, exactly. wherever. <laughs> have have a museum because museums always bring in tourists. Yeah, like if I see a sign for a museum when I'm on the road or wherever, I'll instantly go, "Ooh, there's a museum there. I'll have to check it out at some point." Well, yeah, we we many years ago as teenagers went to Mansfield on a day out just to go to the museum. Yeah, Mansfield Museum. We used to I used to go there all the time on school mm. trips. You go to the museum because it, it brings schools into the area, which then the kids will tell their parents about the museum, and they might be taken to it uh, like on the weekends or wherever. And I think it had also increased the community spirit within Sutton because, and within Ashfield as a whole, because people will be able to learn about their past. Yeah, I think so. I think anything we can do to increase community spirit and get rid of this attitude that, you know, Ashfield is a, a helpless area. Yeah, that's, downtrodden. You know, nothing's going for it. Everyone just wants to leave as soon as they can. If if you get enough motivated people with the ambition to change the area for the better... It'll work. Ashfield has so much potential to be one of the nicest areas it's, it's in, a in the country. It's in a nice area. It's not too far away from uh, one of the main motorways of the country. Well, that's it. Ashfield, Sutton in Ashfield particularly, is in a really good spot. Yeah. It's on the Derbyshire border. Uh, you can get a bus 
to Derby or to Nottingham very yeah. quickly. I mean, it's near um, Mansfield, the second most populated place in Nottinghamshire after mm. the city. I think Sutton itself is the fifth most populated area. Like in terms of travel links, yeah, Sutton is great. And of course, someone said online as well when talking about Sutton as an area that you are a five-minute walk away from green pastures. Yeah. It's such a naturistic area around us. Mm. I mean, even Sutton Lawn, it's this massive area of green. Yeah. It's got a lake as well, the lake around Sutton Lawn, which is, it's such a nice place to just have a walk. Yeah. And have a sit down, look at the ducks, walk around, listen to birds, play a game of football. In my um, in my first year of uni, I got a chest infection. And um, the air quality in Leicester isn't great. <laughs> it's one of the most polluted cities <laughs> in the UK, I believe. Um, but I couldn't get rid of this chest infection. And then I went back home to Sutton. And the air quality is just so much better. Yeah, it, it it's weird because, because of how... Like living in Sutton, how the people you're around, how they sort of react to the area... You think it's going to be absolutely horrible, and yeah. that there are places in the area that that are downtrodden and are in need of help. But yes, there is. Yes, that's like fixing them would do the world of good. Well, that's that's exactly the point, isn't it? the The council has been given this money as part of the development fund. Yeah, um, millions of pounds. And instead of putting that money into areas that could actually use the help, yeah. they decide to tear down a landmark yeah, I, in an area of the town that is fine. Yeah, like Portland Square, it could be upgraded. There's definitely stuff that they could do to it yeah, and that would make it nicer. I, like, I'm not going to put that past them. Having some green areas in the main bit of town would be nice. Mm. But there's areas not too far from there that need the help way more. Yeah, I mean, one one area I would particularly like to see improved is Outram Street. Yeah. There's so many shops that are just closed down. Mm. I mean, personally, um, because of what I'm studying at university, having a cinema in Sutton, yes. we used to have, um, I think, around five cinemas. I don't know if they were all active at the same time. There was certainly in... I think the 60s to 70s, two or three cinemas active at the same time. And, I mean, in the 70s, a lot of, like, small chain cinemas closed mm. down because Odeon started coming up, and uh, they sort of replaced everything. But, but I think we there, never is got room, a new one. there is room for an independent cinema oh, in Ashfield now. Definitely. I mean, you look at the amount of buildings that are just... They've not got anything in them. Mm-hmm which you could easily repurpose into a small cinema. Yeah, uh, ideally you would kick Weatherspoons out of where the old <laughs> cinema was. Yeah, and reignite that that cuz it's it's such a it's such a lovely building. I mean, I'm writing my dissertation mm. about that building itself because it stands out. Yeah. On the square, it's um the design of the building, it's uh, art deco style, so it's sort of 1920s invoking. And um it was built by a fairly notable Nottinghamshire-based architect. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's got the history. It used to be a cinema. Before the cinema was there, it was a theatre as well. It's always been a place of entertainment. Yeah, and some some cinemas can be set up where they can be multi-purpose, where you can yeah. have it be a cinema, cinema and, and a also... Bar. Yeah, and a bar, and, you know, rent it out as theatre space to yeah. local actors. Exactly, local theatre groups mm. as well have have local showings have it be a proper community center yeah a community center would be great and there is a lot of potential in sutton and ashfield if it just had the right amount of people yeah want to do we, we just need people passionate enough to go in and go all right we're going to re reignite sutton and ashfield we're going to make everybody proud to be from the town. We're not going to have people wanting to get out at any opportunity they can. Yes, because unlike Ashfield District Council, we believe that you should build up and not tear down. Exactly. And, um, you know, maybe you would want a house building song while you are building up. 
Exactly. Which is why we're going to play the house building song <laughs> from Red Dead Redemption 2. Wherever you are, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back I'll to Mead be. and Cheese. We've had a brief musical interlude um, while we uh, take toilet breaks and stuff like that. Um, we are now through to Lord Thomas Jackson. Hello, Tom. You are on Mead and Cheese. <laughs> Tom? <laughs> Hello? Hello, you are on Mead and Cheese. How is the Cornwall tour going? Cool, uh, speaking's not great here, so I'm going to be just going to walk up a bit. How are you doing, Corey? Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good, mate. So, um, you've been listening to our Save the Sundial special. Oh, I think it's fantastic. Like, I, I just, you know, your song Save the Sundial is that earlier um, while I was on the country road uh, looking at it it's just fantastic song but it's sad that it has to go come to you making that song um, because like, it shouldn't even be considered you know, no, it's just not yeah. something you know taking down the sundial isn't it? it's, I, I, again I'm not something I'm an outsider and I've never heard the word Sutton without the word sundial so it's crazy to me to think that that the council shirt is removing No, it is crazy, and as we said earlier on the show, it's not something that we ever thought would happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, like, a lot of people, because I, I had been thinking a lot of certainty, and I think, well, no, it's not going to do it either. You need someone to, uh, but, you know, what is proud of what certain is, and I've heard, like, you and the show talk about that, and I think, like, a lot of that, you can see on the show, you can see the charge, you know, you should have a you should have a problem, 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 you should have a who is from? Who is from the area? Who cares about the area? True. So um. So um yeah, Tom. Thanks, thanks for calling in, and we will um definitely have you back on later. Alright, thanks for calling me out. I'm really enjoying the show. Keep up the keep doing the good fight. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. So that was DJ Cheese. Absolute legend. Who rightfully says that Ashfield needs a new leader who is from Ashfield, who cares about Ashfield. That's completely true. It, it, it is true, yeah. We need someone with spirit. We need someone with the drive to make Ashfield great. Someone with the drive, with the power. Who stays hungry, who devours. <laughs> 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 Shall we um go back to the chat article? Yeah. And see what see what more people have been saying. So um Margaret Shipman says spend the money on the roads. See I have saw a lot of people talking about uh the roads, but I did see um the council say that they're not allowed to because no, of, because yes. of what the money's been given out for. They're not allowed to put it to the roads. Well, it's it's not that, actually. Um, Ashfield District Council isn't in charge of the roads. Oh. It's actually the responsibility of Notts County Council to um, uh, manage and fix the roads. Yeah, so the whole spend it on the roads argument, I've never really been behind because I know that that's just... It's, it's a null argument. It's, it's out they, of their control. They can't help that. It's You need to get in touch with Notts County Council to sort the roads out, which do need sorting out. Yes, but, um, you know, a lot of people will have a go at Ashfield District Council, and a lot of the time for good reason. Yeah. But, um, but having a go at them about the roads, which isn't in their control, yeah, is, is one thing you should probably stop, stop moaning at them for. 
Yeah, moan at them for the right reasons. Yeah, moan at them <laughs> for stuff that is in their control, such as tearing down beloved landmarks exactly. that have been there for nearly 30 years. Nearly 30 years. It's, Outrageous. It's, it's insane to think about. It really is. Um, yeah. Someone else said uh, that it's another way to waste money. Yeah. With um, Kay Wallace saying another thing to waste money on. And Sean Florence saying throwing wasted money on top of the money wasted on building the sundial in the first place. See, so that, that goes to show that even some people who disliked the idea of a sundial being built to begin with now find it to be pointless to tear it down because then I mean, if they found it pointless to build it, tearing it down it isn't going to change that. Well, it, it's sort of the thing, isn't it, that, you know, the the council spent a lot of money many years ago with the development fund at the time yeah. to build the sundial as something to develop the area. Yeah. And now, nearly 30 years later, the council <laughs> is using the development money to destroy something that was built with the development money. <laughs> Which... You know, it does seem like a massive waste of time and money yeah. when you put it like that. Yeah, well, uh, with the proposed plans that they've come up with as well, it's taken it back to how it was beforehand. Yeah. Which, we changed that up because we wanted to change it up from well, what it was. Yeah, it won't fully go back to what it was before because yeah, the area it, will stay pedestrianised. Yeah, which which I think is a very good I thing. Think it I should. think having a... It's like um, cities... I think every city should be pedestrianised. I, I I controversially would love to see a world without cars. Me too. No cars would be lovely. Yeah. Have it being able to walk wherever you want, or catch a train, or a decent bus. Have have everywhere. Have you know a lot of bike lanes. Yeah. Um, bike everywhere, or take public transport everywhere. Maglevs. Maglevs. Big fast if, train. If you don't know what a maglev is, it is a um. It's a kind of magnet train where the uh, the train hovers above the track and it goes at super fast speeds. Super speed, Sutton to Mansfield in 0.5 seconds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, I'm going to hop on the maglev to Nottingham. All right, I'm in Nottingham now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in, a, in a perfect world, there wouldn't be any cars. No. In a perfect world, all of public transport would be nationalised. Yeah. And... Um, Free to use for everyone. Yeah. But I mean, uh, we don't live in a we perfect world. We don't live in world. a perfect world. We live in a world uh, run We're... by the socialist elite, such as <laughs> Nestle. The socialist <laughs> company. <laughs> my my, my, my favourite my favorite bit of socialism is massive corporations. Yeah, my, my favourite part of socialism is exploiting indici- indigenous <laughs> people for profit. <laughs> those, those, go- uh, those socialists... God, God damn socialists. I don't know if I was allowed to say that word <laughs> on air. Probably not, to be fair. We'll have to bleep it out post-production. Demon FM would like to apologise if the language use has offended anyone. Uh, on with the show. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we are being ironic when we say... Yeah, just in case the any world of you is run by socialists. That, that, that we were being truthful there. Um, obviously... Nestle and we were, Kellogg's we were, and we were describing capitalism. UNICEF and all these companies are not socialist. <laughs> they're the, they're they're the opposite of socialism, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know if I would call myself a socialist, but I'd probably call myself a socialist. But at the same time, I, I I'm not going to go around saying that we live in a Society. socialist world. <laughs> Yeah, we 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 live in a society. We we live in a society. Sus, 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 sus. <laughs> you live in a amogus, amogus. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we we live in a society where the elite want to trample on the people by removing their sundials. They want to get rid of our sundials. They want to get rid of our history. Why are they getting rid of the sundial? I. How am I meant to tell the time? <laughs> <laughs> How can I tell the time with no sundial? Yes. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, going back to the chat article. Um, so this was proposed by uh, Councillor Matthew Ralph, 
He's the executive member for Regeneration on the Ashfield District Council. He explained why moving the sundial was not possible. He said, We looked at the option of moving it, but the top arm section is fibreglass, which at 27 years old is now very fragile, and those in the know don't believe it would survive being moved. So to deal with that, you simply don't move the sundial. <laughs> yeah, that if would be the solution. To damage it? a twenty-seven-year-old piece of history, but you probably shouldn't be moving it. Or if you know the sundial wasn't built to last, if the fiberglass is degrading over time and getting weaker, where eventually it'll break, rebuild it out of Save something it. else. Yeah, fix it. But people have fixed things all throughout history. It's one of the main things people do: fix stuff. I, I don't understand how we can have like these marble statues that have survived thousands of years, yeah. yet the sundial can't survive 27 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a mill that survived 100-odd years. Yeah. And that's been perfectly fine. But the sundial that's been in the very centre of town for 27 years, c- can't fix that. Nope. It's unfixable. My, my question is, if people start throwing rocks at the sundial, would it just shatter? Yeah. Maybe it, you could have a contest who can shatter the sundial. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a safety hazard, you know, say that's why you're getting rid of it. Exactly. That, at least that's a decent reason. Then. Not, we want to put some patches of grass. That's, I still don't like. They're replacing it with patches of grass when two minutes across the road... There's the Sutton Lawn, a massive patch of grass. <laughs> yeah. We've already got patches of grass. Replace it with something a bit cooler. Yeah, I like the idea of um, down the road putting some patches of grass, you know, yeah. leading up to the sundial, had a bit of greenery to the town. It's it's a nice it, idea. Yeah. Make, making the area look nicer would work better than digging up the sundial. But... Um, yeah, patches of grass with, you know, a few trees and stuff. Trees that are going to affect the uh, the pathways with their roots. That It's going to eventually yeah. make the ground a bit unstable. Uh, we've got... Sutton has beautiful, like, brick lane streets. I've always li- loved the streets in Sutton because yeah, it's yeah. made up of old bricks. And it looks, it looks beautiful. Well, I'd, I'd say it's a very attractive feature of Sutton. I really like the uh, stone slash brickwork on the sundial yeah. as well. Um, I think, you know, seeing the photos of when it was first built in 95 and around that time when it had uh, the metal plating and all the numbers. Yeah. and uh, When it was properly looked after. Yeah, when it was properly looked after. It had a fresh paint job. It, was, it wasn't painted grey. It wasn't painted dull grey. I feel like but, the, the know, when it was well maintained, pa- the sundial was beautiful. The only, it was a beautiful I, I swear, the only reason they painted the sundial that dull grey colour is so that they could get rid of it because people would say it looks ugly. Well, if we're getting into conspiracy, <laughs> Ashfield District Council paid to repaint the sundial not that long ago. No, it was only a couple of months ago. They they repainted it all a very light it dull grey. Looks like they've colour. done it they've put primer on it and then not painted over it, which is what yeah. you're supposed to do after you put primer on stuff. It, it looks like they wanted to paint it white, but they couldn't afford white paint. <laughs> so they got the nearest thing. <laughs> and it was just this really um boring grey. And the conspiracy is that Ashfield District Council repainted the sundial a horrible colour to convince people that it is an eyesore so yeah. that public opinion would be swayed to get rid of it. So they can get rid of it, melt the metal down and sell it off to make more money. That's the yeah. conspiracy. Fiberglass, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure, it's definitely not made of a valuable metal material. What if it's made of solid gold? What if it's solid as a microwave? <laughs> <laughs> what if it's solid as a liquid blender? That's a that's a that's a really deep question. <laughs> if you know a lot about toast, are you the knowing toast, <laughs> or are you just one of his toastmeisters? <laughs> oh, we should have got um, more more Ashfield people like knowing toast. 
to come on the show and give their opinion. That would have been would have been pretty great. Sweet. I mean, we we only found out about this whole Sundar debacle last week. Yeah. So it's it's been very quick to. Uh, I mean, when did they they posted a Facebook video about it? And um, haven't you been informed that they've already started? Try like starting to remove it. Supposedly, yeah, the reports are coming out that they have already started work on removing the sundial, and um, that the top section, the fiberglass section, has been removed. Where it is now, and what condition it's in, we don't know. Ashfield Council, if you're listening right now, and you have the fiberglass top of the sundial, don't scrap it. Save it. Put it yes. in a museum. And, you know, if it has broken a little bit... That just adds to the story. Get some Gorilla Glue. <laughs> <laughs> Duct tape it. <laughs> but, yeah, maybe don't do that, but because the, the, there's got to be a way to fix it. Exactly. Well, or even so, even if not, have the shards of it, whatever's left, and if display it like, you know, the sword in the Lord of the Rings. If it was made out of fiberglass, surely it would have had to have been made in a mould. Yeah. Where's, so where's, where's the mould? Where's the mould? <laughs> Where is the original <laughs> mould for the sundial? Put that in a museum. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Why can't they just make another sundial? Where are the architectural plans for the sundial? Exactly. I mean, I still think Sutton has missed out on a huge marketing opportunity with the sundial. He should have made shirts and hoodies and hats and yep. little little mini statuettes of the sundial. Snow globes. Snow globes. Sundial snow globes. Portland Square snow globes would sell like wildfire. Yeah. I mean, whether it's actually snow or something else, we don't know. But Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sutton. <laughs> it's Sutton. It could be whatever you want it to be. It could be. Um, anyway, let's, um, <laughs> let's talk about some of the Chad readers who said that they would be happy to see the sundial gone. Carol Walters said, I wish it could go back to how it was when it was a raised flower bed with seating. See, that sounds lovely. And you could do that. While still having the sundial there, there's no need to get rid of it. Build around it. There's space there. Someone suggested actually uh, moving the sundial um, to an area surrounded by grass, maybe like a roundabout. Yeah. And uh, putting little flower beds as the um, as the, the numbers. numbers. Look, they could do that. It would look on so Portland nice. Square. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've have said. the raised flower bed with the sundial on it. All they have to do with the sundial is use it more. Yeah. Instead of at Christmas, instead of getting the massive tree up, decorate the sundial. What other town is going to have their Christmas tree be a sundial? <laughs> and like, like how we've spoken about before, a tour de Sutton, where you have a, a foot race around the town with a start and the end point being running through the sundial. Tour de Ashfield. Exactly. Tour de Knots. Toward the nuts. sundial, as the exactly. Start and end. It's it's you could use it for so many things. Yeah, it it should be made a bigger deal out of than it yeah. is. Yeah. Um, because things are only as valuable as you make them out to be. Exactly. If if you don't, you know, make a big enough fuss about the sundial, no one else is. It's it's exactly. down to it's the like, council to make the sundial the attraction it should be. If the Eiffel Tower wasn't all bigged up to be the Eiffel Tower, mm. no one would care about it. It would be like Blackpool Tower. People are like, yeah, it's a cool tower. But people don't go to Blackpool to see Blackpool Tower. You yeah, go to Paris but, to but, see the Eiffel Tower. But Blackpool Tower is a historic landmark, and it's not something that Blackpool it's City not, yeah, would get rid they're of. not getting rid of Blackpool Tower. Because why would they? Blackpool, the city of a thousand dreams, is uh, it's it's. I mean, Blackpool Tower featured in the greatest film of the modern era, the Harry Hill movie. Of course. So if they get rid of that, there'd be a there'd be an uproar, Pro- probably a bigger uproar than there is about the sundial. Yeah, I I can't understand the mindset of getting rid of the sundial. That'd be like you know. Knocking down idol worlds. It'd be like, you know, a small town in, in the USA getting rid of the world's largest ball of yarn. Exactly. That's the only thing bringing people to the town. Like, why would you get rid of it? 
it's something cool to talk about. Unless it blew away in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> a giant cat comes and starts playing with it. <laughs> oh, that would be that would be something to behold. Um, yeah. So let's go to some music now. While we uh, discuss some Sundial things. So let's have Dick Dale Mizzaloo. We are back on hashtag save our sundial. Yes. Meat and cheese. So we have the uh, video put out by the Asheville District Council as part of the 62.2 million town funds project. That money definitely should be spent on removing the sundial, obviously. Oh, definitely. Not that's not my on that's areas my first that thought. Need it. Sixty-two point two million. That's a lot. That's, that's more money than I could imagine. So a few weeks ago, we asked whether the sundial should stay or go, and the overwhelming majority supported the removal. A few weeks ago is a very vague, vague time, time frame, and overwhelming majority instead of. A specific percent. Yeah. You could say overwhelming majority if 51% of people said so. I mean, that would be uh, stretching the term overwhelming. I mean, overwhelming means different things to different people. Maybe it was overwhelming how small the majority (laughs) was. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Maybe they asked one person. That's a hundred percent of the people. That's hundred percent of people. Maybe, want it maybe, gone. maybe Matthew Ralph, the councillor, asked himself. <laughs> he looked in the mirror and went, "Should we remove the sundial?" Yeah. <laughs> wow, one hundred percent of people want it gone. That is an overwhelming majority. <laughs> on Monday, the eighteenth of July, which has passed now, um, we will be on Portland Square. Well, it's time. School's out. It's time for home run. <laughs> I love it when they play my tunes. It's not time for home run. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) On Monday, the 18th of July, we will be on Portland Square, Sutton, between 10am and 1pm with the plans for the new design of Portland Square. We would love for you to come along and share your views on the plans. Monday, the 18th of July, being one of the hottest days on record. Yes. Which they knew about when they posted that video. Yes. Nobody was going to go out on that day, regardless of how passionate they were. I planned to. I, I couldn't get the day off work. I, I was in Sutton at the time. I could not stand outside for more than ten minutes. No. I'm I'm horrible in the heat. But some of the comments on this video even said, um, you know, why not come and show the plans and let people give thoughts on a day that most people aren't at work? Yeah, do it on a Saturday or a Sunday. Yeah. And do it. Do it on a Saturday when there will be the most footfall in town. Yeah, have it there from ten till six. Yeah. But they didn't do that. Um and as you said, I, I doubt many people turned up. Yeah, the hottest day of the year while everyone who isn't at home staying out of the heat is working. Yeah. We will also be sharing the plans on our website and Facebook page in the coming days for those who can't make it in person on Monday. Difference is, though, posting it on your website, you can't really give comments. Exactly, yeah. That. And they, on the they, Facebook, they can monitor the comments. Yeah, I know on Facebook a lot of the comments were people saying, I don't like this proposal. And uh, I know some people were... Some people said, I don't think the uh, artist who drew this up knows the scale of Portland Square. It looks like he made it too big for the actual square. Yeah. And like it get in the way of all the shops that are already there. And uh, a lot of people have said that there, a lot of people have that I've seen have said they're on board for a new design for the Portland Square, but they don't like the artist's impression. The, the mm. only thing is they, they're giving out an artist's impression. Usually when you're giving out impressions of stuff, you have multiple different versions of it. Yeah. They've got one version and that's it. It's like they've already made their mind up. It it does seem that way. Um, And I was speaking to someone who, uh, you know, knows people in the council and I won't I won't say who it is. But, (laughs) you know, they they were saying that um, 
when the council sets their minds to it, to something that yeah. they want to do, they will, air quotes, ask people. Yeah, but they've already made their mind up ten they, weeks they, ago. They don't ask people. They claim they have. And then they, they never don't. show any proof. Yeah. So they will claim they've asked people what their opinions are, um, and then they will throw the money around. Yeah. To do what they have set their minds to <laughs> without consulting the people. Which is the opposite of what a council should do. It is the opposite of what our democracy should be. <laughs> uh, who votes these people in? <laughs> I certainly didn't. No, I didn't either. When was the last um, election for the council or whatever? I don't know exactly uh, how it bad, was. Bad, bad, I don't know if I was old enough to vote. I mean, maybe. <laughs> So uh, let's play the video from Councillor Matthew Ralph, uh, the executive lead member for Regeneration and Corporate Transformation. Corporate Transformation. Which makes it sound more sus that this is a business move and not a town yeah. regeneration move. But anyway, let's see what he's got to say. Hi, I'm Councillor Matthew Ralph, portfolio holder for Regeneration and Transformation here at Ashfield District Council. Now, we've been wildly successful with the bids that we've put into the government, with over £70 million secured so far, with more bids going in for Hucknall and the Rurals and other areas coming soon. Now, one of the projects that you voted for, that we put in a bid for, was regenerating Portland Square here in Sutton. Now, we asked you a few weeks ago what you thought about the sundial, and the response came back overwhelmingly that you wanted to see it gone. So our design's been beavering away and putting together a design of what this space could look like, but we want to hear from you and get your feedback. So on Monday, there's going to be a stall down here with some staff on explaining the concept we want to hear from you there that if you can't come down on Monday there's also going to be on details on the Ashfield District Council website and the Discover Ashfield website where you can email in your feedback and please feedback we want to hear from you so that we can get this just right thank you so that was Matthew Ralph um, talking about the new plans for the Sundar um, so, yeah, he claims that it's something that people put a bid in for to regenerate Portland Square. Which I, I don't... I, I, can, I can see that being like an actual thing that they did genuinely ask about. Because I, I know people are fairly passionate about that area. Like, the people that are passionate proper talk about it. And it is an area that I think could could do with being done up, make it look a little nicer and everything. Yeah. And I think um, looking after some of the buildings around there would do a lot better because a lot of them don't look in the best shape. Well, that's it, isn't it? When when you say regenerate Portland Square, my mind would go to let's let's refurbish the sundial. Yeah, my my mind goes to let's improve what we've already got. Yeah, don't not we scrap. We don't want to start from scratch because that costs more money than it's worth. Yeah, more money, which could go to other areas of Ashfield. He said um, on a, on his video that they have gained over £70 million from the government mm. to go towards development in Ashfield, which is a good thing. Yeah. If used correctly. Uh, definitely. If, if, if they put all of that money towards Ashfield instead of... And, and use it to improve the area rather than, you know restart the area it, it, it seems like they're trying to get rid of what Ashfield has yeah and make it something new which it's it's that works sometimes but it also costs more money than just rejuvenating what we've already got would it, yeah I mean it's sort of like um you know you you become the mayor of London and you're like let's let's knock down the London eye and then put a park there yeah you know, we we don't really need uh, Big Ben anymore. We don't need that to tell the time. No, we'll put People some grass. Friends. We'll put some grass there. We'll put a, yeah. we'll put a big park there. When you've already got some really nice parks in London, we, we've got we have some Sutton's nice parks. In an Sutton. incredibly nice park, Sutton Lawn is. I mean, there's some bits of that which could do with a bit of zhuzhing up. You know, make it look a yeah, bit nicer. Yeah. Add some more flowers or plants around. But Sutton Lawn is a it's it's a wonderful little park area, nature area. It, it is. It's quite a big patch of it's, grass. You, you never realise how big it is until you take a walk around the entire area. 
Mm. And you're like, wow, this is really big. Yeah. And a lot of it is just grass at the moment, but add some more trees, add some more flowers in there. Have Make an area on Sutton Lawn dedicated to nature. Have it, like, let it overgrow a bit. It'll bring in more animals to the area, hedgehogs, foxes, and all that, which is good for the environment. Mm -hmm. And then you could take school trips there. Well, Ashfield has a lot of foxes anyway. Yeah. And and quite a lot of hedgehogs. And, you know, the wildlife in Ashfield, I think, is doing pretty well, as we mentioned earlier. You know, you're in Sutton. You are always a five-minute walk away from nature. Yeah. Yeah, everywhere you you go, there's a bit of nature around you. And, um, you know, I think it's sad that they want to get rid of the sundial when there are parts of the town yeah. that could use the development more. Oh, definitely, yeah. There's there's, there's places in Sutton where I, I won't step foot in them just because it it makes you upset yeah. to walk, walk through places of town that have just been forgotten. There are many places just a two-minute walk away from the sundial that could use the <laughs> development a lot more. I mean, right down the street, you've got where um, the old YMCA building is. I think it's still yeah. there, but it's closed down. That whole area, George that up a bit. Make it look nicer. You could turn that into an arcade. Exactly. Chuck a, chuck a cinema there. Yeah, maybe. Um, I think, you know where um, Sanctuary Gaming is currently? Yeah. That's, uh, where the old job centre was. Yeah, that's uh, before it was the job centre. Fun fact, that used to be where the uh, screen rooms for the old King Cinema was. It got knocked down. So. Well, I was just going to say, that would be a great building for a cinema. Yeah, it used to, used to be where the cinema was. Overall. Ideally, again, you would kick Weatherspoons out of the old <laughs> cinema. <laughs> yeah. And you would have both of those buildings dedicated to being the cinema. That would be... I, I, w- I would have genuinely loved to have seen that building in its heyday as a cinema, because it looks absolutely beautiful. I know, my um, my granddad actually went to the cinema there yeah. um, on a school trip to watch the Queen's Coronation. Oh. As a as a wee lad. That that would have been a, been a like, a a historic moment. moment. Historic yeah. moment, yeah. And, you know, the, these pieces of our history just aren't, really um honored in the way they should be yeah well well um i was you just reminded me of something but I, it was when i was talking to the living memory group again uh so we were talking about one of the uh old cinemas that used to be there but uh this was the cinema that was like it was the it was the worst cinema in Sutton. it wasn't very well kept or anything um and roy orbison was meant to perform there and then uh he got there or his managers got there, looked at the place and went, no. So we performed in Mansfield instead. But you think of that. Sounds we, about right. We had a place that could potentially attract somebody like Roy Orbison. Well, that's it, isn't it? Like, and if, we, we currently don't have anywhere where somebody could perform. If you had an artist the level of Roy Orbison perform in Sutton and Ashfield, that'd be incredible. Yeah, there's going to be people coming from different places to see Roy Orbison. Yeah, because uh, it 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 would be the closest place for some people. It would, and of course, um, a cinema in Sutton would not just benefit the people of Sutton. It benefit everyone in Ashfield. It would benefit everyone in in Nottinghamshire. Yeah, because uh, there's cinemas in Nottingham, the city, of course. Um, mm-hmm. But um, the closest cinema to us is in Mansfield. Yeah, and it's the Odeon, and it's one of the most expensive cinemas outside of London. Well, that's it, isn't it? If there was a an independent cinema in Ashfield, then the Odeon in Mansfield would have competition close to it. Yeah, and then you know they would be forced to bring their prices down. Yeah, and if they didn't do that, the people in Mansfield would go to Sutton. could get on a bus <laughs> to Sutton to see a film. Exactly. I I think it's it's just. There's not much going for Sutton at the moment, and tearing down the one thing we've got, Yeah, I I don't think it's a good choice. I don't think tearing down is ever the right choice. We we should build up, not tear down. Exactly. Like you said, regenerate Portland Square means add to what you've already got, Yeah, not destroying things to start again. 
It's, I mean, it's like Doctor Who, regeneration in Doctor Who. Yeah. He changes his looks completely, the Doctor. Like, he's been an old Scottish man. He's She's a woman at the moment. She's going to turn into Nshuti Gatwa soon. <laughs> and uh, the whole thing with that is, yeah, completely changes personality, how it looks and everything, just like how you can change the personality of a town. But there's always the core bit of the Doctor, which is the character. It, there's always recognisable features of it. And Sutton's recognisable feature is the sundial. It is. It really is. Um, there are many people I've spoken to, and, you know, the one thing they know about Sutton is the sundial. Well, I've, I've got friends um, that I live with at university that I've spoken to about the sundial, and they genuinely want to come to Sutton to see the sundial. Yeah, I mean, it would be great if you could, you know, come to Sutton on a sunny day and see the sundial working. Yeah, it'd be... It's it's sort of a a town gimmick. Because <laughs> there, there are many people I've spoken to um, who are around our age, and I don't, I don't want to sound like a boomer and be like, oh, kids don't know anything <laughs> these days. But there are a lot of people our age who I've spoken to who genuinely, like, don't know what a sundial is. See... How do you not know what a sundial is? And, you know, I feel like having the sundial in Sutton also serves an educational purpose. Yeah, it teaches you how to read solar time. Yeah. It Which, teaches you what a sundial is. Yeah, and there are a lot of people who, you know, moan that the sundial doesn't work and that it doesn't tell the real time. <laughs> but, you know, that's... That's part of the novelty. We're talking about our man-made time zones... <laughs> like GMT and BST. But the sundial, as you said, tells solar time. It tells the time relative, relative to, to the, the sun. sun. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at high noon, when the sun is at its highest high in the noon. sky, the sundial will display noon. Exactly. Regardless of the time of year. Yeah. It's going to be noon. Exactly. So in the middle of summer, when our time zone is plus an hour, instead of saying one o'clock, the sundial will say noon. Exactly. But uh, some people don't like that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, personally, I hate knowing what the time is. I like living <laughs> my life on the edge. I, I never keep time, never keep track of time. Personally, I hate daylight savings. I think it's a stupid thing that we shouldn't Why do is What's daylight saving up for? <laughs> <laughs> that's a very very good question it really is so uh, next up we have the Donkey Kong rap on Demon FM do enjoy DK rap <laughs> Really, really is. Um, yeah, so we've been talking a lot about the Sutton Sundial on this episode of Meat and Cheese, and uh, <laughs> rightfully so, and you can join our campaign on any social media platform by using the hashtag Save Our Sundial. S-O-S. We're in distress. <laughs> we are in distress. <laughs> we are... Um, so let's let's go to some mead news. According to NASA Earth, who posted this two hours ago on the Facebook, continuing a 22-year downward trend, water levels in Lake Mead stand at their lowest since April 1937, when the reservoir was still being filled for the first time. As of July 18th, 2022. Lake Mead was filled to just 27% of capacity. Wow. Lake Mead is disappearing. You see, this shows that climate change is a real issue. And, it really is. Um, you know, first we lost the River Idol. Now we're losing Lake Mead. Everything's going away. Everything will be gone. Eventually. 
until you know the ice caps melt, and then we'll be we'll have lots of water everywhere. Maybe maybe too much. <laughs> maybe too much. Um, have you seen the proposed map of the UK for after the ice caps all melt? Isn't it basically like the very middle? It's like a bunch of little islands. Yeah. Yeah. Nottingham will be fairly safe because we're right in the middle. Nottingham, the city, um, I think, becomes like um, a beach. Oh, we've already, a beach town. It's already a beach in Nottingham. Well, <laughs> it comes there every summer. Oh yeah, historic port town, Nottingham. <laughs> um, Sutton safe because I feel like it's pretty high up. Fair bit of Derbyshire would be safe because of the Peak District. Yeah, so Sutton is, has quite a high level of elevation. Yeah, um, as does a lot of Derbyshire, which Sutton is near the border of. Sutton is it, it's basically Derbyshire. It's basically I mean, Nottinghamshire. At, as a kid. Whenever I do, go on a trip to a place in Derbyshire, I th- I never thought I was leaving the county. I thought everything was in Nottinghamshire, and I was I was wrong. Well, there are proposed plans by the government to um, combine Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire into the East Midlands Super County. Incredible. And there will be a mayor of the East Midlands. The mayor of the East Midlands. Mayor Midland himself, or herself, or themselves. Mayor Midland. Who 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 could be Mayor Midland? Could it be Thirty P Lee? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I think Andy Gray. Andy Gray. K- the and- king. The king. Andy Gray's from Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. I I no clue. I just assume everyone who. <laughs> Everyone who's in Sutton comes from Sutton. Maybe, um, well, you don't have to be from the East Midlands to be the mayor of the East Midlands. I've, I feel like East Midlands people wouldn't like that. Maybe, um, maybe we get Barack Obama. Okay, m- maybe to be the mayor of the East Midlands. <laughs> we can finally find out what his last name is. What is Obama's last name? <laughs> This is a very good question. To it, be fair. it is. It is. It's uh, confounded philosophers for centuries. I, I'd like to know what his <laughs> name is. <laughs> um, we could get Gordon Brown. Gordon Brown to come down. Come to town. To the town <laughs> from Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay. Where is Gordon Ramsay from? Scotland. Well, there you go. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. Bot, Bot Simpson. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> so Mead and Cheese have put out quite a few posts about the uh, Save Our Sundar, which uh, I will read out. Right now, so I will go to the Mead and Cheese Twitter. Mead and Cheese Twitter. Mead and Cheese on Twitter. On the tweet. Err. Oh. If I can find, find the post. Where is it? It's got to be on here somewhere, surely. My Hancock. Um, yeah, so here it is. At Ashfield District Council, removing the Sutton Sundial from Sutton and Ashfield is like removing the Eiffel Tower from Paris. Do not remove the sundial. Hashtag save our sundial. Hashtag Sutton and Ashfield. Hashtag Ashfield. Hashtag Nottinghamshire. Hashtag democracy, not autocracy. True. Very true. That's very true. It is. I would say that's canon. I mean, they they, they are just kind of doing what they want. <laughs> I mean, have they ever not done that? To be fair, that's a good <laughs> point. Um, yeah. So, Mead and Cheese, we are leading the fight uh, alongside the Nithercarts to Hello. save the Sundial. So, um, tell us your thoughts 
on the Sutton Sundial, on our Twitter, our Instagram, our Facebook, our YouTube, our TikTok. <laughs> Maybe even our um, Anchor Podcast website. Leave <laughs> <laughs> a review on Amazon. Yeah, we're on Amazon, we're on <laughs> Apple, we're on Patreon. Uh, one pound a month. One for pound the, a month. Um, you know, to support the great cause that is mead and cheese. Pound a month. That's that's three meals. That three thirty pences. That that is, isn't it? That's <laughs> acor- according to the Ashfield MP, thirty P Lee. <laughs> the um, the one pound a month mead and cheese membership could be better spent on free meals. Well, three days worth of meals. Three days worth of meals. Thirty and pence a day. Maybe some some snacks and some dessert. Yeah, a couple of snacks because you got ten pence left over. Exactly. That Ooh. is how the value of the pound works. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you can walk into any shop. Any shop. I won't name a particular shop in case you have certain preferences. Any shop you can come out with. Fifteen taters, and that'll last you a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Any shop like lowpricefoods.com. Call to action that. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you you walk into lowpricefoods.com. Oh, you can't anymore. You see, this is the problem that Sutton has, that all the great businesses are closing down. Yeah, they all leave Sutton because nobody goes there. Like low price foods, um obviously 30p Lee, he he's he's not really on the ball with um how much food costs people. Uh, so I don't think he's spent 30 pence on anything in his life. Is it like everything he's spent has been way over 30 pence. Well, well, maybe back, you know, when 30 pence was worth a lot more. Oh, uh, yeah, when Fredo's were like 2 pence. But, um, you know, lowpricefoods.com, you could genuinely walk in there and get a 30p meal. Yeah. Like, you, you could probably get a week's worth of food for oh, you 5 could, pounds. You could get a lot in there. Yeah. So, so all lowpricefoods.com. Should we see if the website is still up? I, it is. It is. I went on it the other the other week because I was curious. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're we're on the um, the Demon FM official research computer. And we are we are looking at lowpricefoods.com. This is incredible research. It's uh, the forefront of university research. So lowpricefoods.com, great deals every day. This is a, um, it was a physical walk-in shop that was based in Sutton and Ashfield, just about a minute down the road from the sundial. Exactly, you know, perfect spot. And uh, yeah, you can get yourself some really cheap meals, even in these times of uh, the cost of living crisis. Proper, their proper prices deals. don't seem to have gone up too much, which is very nice to see. Proper deals. So you can get yourself some Heinz lentil curry Ooh. for 95 pence. And it should be £3.50. Bargain. Lentil curry is incredibly nice. And that also goes for Heinz Spanish beans. Spanish beans. And uh, Heinz Mexican chipotle style chorizo. Chipotle. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can also get free bars of Cadbury's dairy milk for one ninety five. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. To say, you know, it's normally a pound a bar. Although if you go to uh, um Asda, Asda everyday value thirty pence for a pound of, for a bar of chocolate. Mr Mr. Anderson would like that. He he would indeed. <laughs> thirty pence. You got yourself a deal there. You really would. You can get yourself some uh, two two cans of oxtail soup for one fifty. Oxtail soup. Yeah. Ooh. Oxtail soup's nice, man. I don't know if I've ever had oxtail soup. It doesn't actually have um, oxtail in it. An ox's tail in it. See, I'd be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> you you can actually get as well some naked Thai sweet chili noodles for um, one twenty for two of them. I wonder where you were going with that sentence for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get some naked tie. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, tie noodles. Tie noodles are nice. There's a, there's a lot you can buy from this shop. Um, you know, the, the prices vary 
item to item, but generally you are paying a lot under what the regular retail value is. Yeah. Which is, you know, in in times like this, it's it's pretty great. swag. And as we said, it it was a Ashfield based business. Um, where it's based now, I'm not sure. I think it's got like it's um, I think it's just a warehouse sort of place now, because all it it just delivers. There's no walk-in area anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's. that's that fair. was um when we were when we used to pop in, like practically every day. We'd have a chat with owner, wouldn't we? Yes. Well, I'm on the about us section. We are specialists in short, dated, and bulk food, selling online and delivering across the whole of the UK. The whole of the UK. So if you're in Northern Ireland or the Shetney Islands, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you can still get your low price foods. <laughs> we opened our first supermarket in 2017 in Sutton in Ashfield. 2017? Yeah. What a long time ago. And started selling online Five across years. the whole of the UK in 2018. Five years ago. So they really started off as just a Sutton based thing. So, as as and everything then it just, should. And then it expanded. By the end of 2019, our website had become extremely popular, with thousands of customers regularly placing orders online, rapidly running out of space in our numerous temporary warehouses. We moved our operations and fulfillment teams into a purpose-built warehouse in 2020 in order to cope with the huge growth in customers experienced on our online store. Their shop was always full of boxes. It was. It was like... It- because you, you get a peek into the storeroom, and it looked like you could barely move around in there. Yeah, because, you know, low price foods, I, I went in there a lot. Yeah. And I think a lot of people in Sutton, where, you know, it's, on average, the um, it's a low socioeconomic area. Yeah. Um, people appreciate low price foods. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, we... We have delivered over 4.5 million items in the UK in 2020 through our online store, lowpricefoods.com. That's outrageous. That's (laughs) That's a lot. That's insane. Our partnership with leading brands and specialist clearance companies across Europe and the UK enable us to bring huge savings to our customers every day. Just one problem, our deals sell out fast. What a swag way to end your... About section. It is, isn't it? Like, what is your favourite all-time Ashfield-based business, and why is it lowpricefoods.com? The .com is a call to action. It is a call to action. What is a call to action? .com. (laughs) (laughs) Gets people talking. It does. Yeah. You you, you don't go to Sports Direct. You You go go to to sportsdirect.com. UK's number one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Low price foods. Dot com. com. It's like well, you don't just go to Tesco. You go to Big Tesco or Little Tesco. <laughs> I, that's not an officially endorsed thing. <laughs> but <No. laughs> you don't just go Morrison's. You go Kirkby Morrison's. <laughs> you go to Morrison's. <laughs> you don't go to Morrison's. You go to Morrisoffs. <laughs> you don't go to M and S. <laughs> you, don't, you don't go to Waitrose. <laughs> the, these are not the opinions of Demon FM. These are, these our, are our own. I mean, opinions. most of the show has just been our personal opinions. We've we've spoken a lot about political and opinionated things. It's all true, hundred percent accurate. It's a it's a hundred percent fact. Exactly. They're, they're, they're they need to fact check. <laughs> Please don't fact check. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> we we are we are crazy people. So go crazy, go stupid. Here's the thing: if uh, the sundial has truly been removed now and cannot be saved, what would you do to um, further the cause of hashtag Save Our Sundial? Build a bigger sundial. That seems like the best way forward. Well, build two sundars. Make it like a um, it's that mythical creature, you know, you cut his head off, and another one. hydra. Is it a hydra? Yeah, 
It's a Hydra. Cut its head off, and then two takes its place. What's the name of the um, three-headed dog? Is that Cerberus? Yeah. B- build a three-headed <laughs> sundar. <laughs> three-headed sundar. I mean, it'll work about as well as the current one does. No, but, you know, if, if the sundial really can't be fixed and it's already been scrapped, Ashfield Council, we will forgive all of these atrocities if you build a new big sundial that is the biggest sundial in the world. We need to reclaim our title. We do. It's very important that we do. I mean, everybody wants to see a very, very big sundial. Yeah. If you went to someone... Do you want to see a massive sundial? How big we talking? <laughs> the biggest. The biggest where? In the world. No thanks. I want to see the biggest in the universe. Oh. <laughs> where? Oh, all right then. <laughs> Sorry for bothering you. <laughs> no, that that would get people talking. And of course, saying something is the biggest in the world. Yeah. Just like saying it's, it's the greatest in the world. Mm. Which it is. Which it is. It is the greatest It is the greatest sundial. sundial. It's the greatest landmark. The greatest in the world. landmark in the world. Um, closely followed by the Laxey Wheel in the Isle of Man, which is the biggest wheel in the world. We do like big wheels. We do like big wheels. We also like Big Weld. Big Weld! <laughs> 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 Big world <laughs> from from robots. The movie about robots. You and McGregor was in that. Whoa. He was he was the robot. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you and McGregor was real. <laughs> so do I, man. So do I. That that would be um that'd be great. <laughs> that would be great if you and McGregor was real. It really would be. It really would. Um, so, going back to hashtag Save Our Sundial, the Sutton Sundial, something that's been standing since 1995, we earlier played Matthew Ralph, the councillor, um, his statement, his video on the Ashfield District Council Facebook page, um, which, you know, we heard he said that the people voted to remove the Sundial, overwhelming majority, which I find hard to believe. Me too. Like an overwhelming majority. It's it's always been sort of um mix and match. It's always if been people kind of like controversial. It it's always been a sort of half yeah. and half. It it really is one of those things where um, you know it it seems there are half the people of the town are indifferent. Yeah, but most most people don't really care. Then you have a small few who Really yeah. hate it. Yeah, they dislike it. And then you have quite a few people our age who, who are like, who like we should the keep it. Yeah. Um, and I would say the people who like the sundial outnumber the people who don't like the sundial. But I think yeah. both of those camps are overwhelmingly <laughs> outnumbered by people <laughs> who don't care. Who don't care. Right, that's that's a big thing with certain. People don't care. Yeah, most people don't care because it's it, it's not nice enough to care. But let's read some of the comments on uh, the Asheville District Council's video. Mead and Cheese comments. <laughs> you claim to have done a vote, yet the comments suggest that nobody knew there was a vote. Curious. <laughs> Curious. <laughs> the people of Asheville do not want to see their landmark removed. Asheville District Council, by removing the Sutton Sundial, you are removing part of the local identity. We here at Mead and Cheese will be leave- leading the hashtag Save Our Sundial campaign and we'll do whatever we can to raise awareness to save our sundial. Save our sundial. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think uh, Mead and Cheese raise a very, very good point there. Well, that yeah, there's... A lot of people I know, there's a shared view among us all uh, that the Sundar should be saved. Yeah, I I know many people from from Sutton and Ashfield, and even beyond Sutton and Ashfield, who 
believe that uh, the Sutton Sundar is something worth saving. Like it's it's a record breaking landmark. Yeah, not many towns can say they've got a a record breaking landmark in the middle of there. Yeah. Town how square. many how many towns can say we have the biggest or greatest in Europe? Not many. No. Because there's only one town that can have that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But we we decided to do it with a sundial, and now that we're getting rid of the sundial, what what do we have? Are we going to build something even bigger than the sundial to take its place? That's more outrageous. The biggest clock tower in the world. I feel like that would be pretty difficult to get. There's some there's some big clock towers out there. What would be the biggest right now, Big Ben? There's probably some bigger than that somewhere. Probably. That'll be a. That'll have to be a bit of research. It will. It will. Um, let's look up actually where the biggest sundials in the world are. Big sundial. And uh, what condition they are in? Because will these places with the biggest sundials remove their sundials? See, is it simply that sundials are going out of fashion? It could be. It could be that largest sundial in Europe. You look it up on Google. It comes up with Sutton and Ashfield as the top result. I've typed in biggest sundial. So the biggest sundial, according to the Google homepage, is the Jantar Mantar in Jaipur. It's a collection of 19 astronomical instruments built by the Rajput king, Sawai Jai Singh II, the founder of Jaipur. Not only is this a big sundial, but it also has stairs. Maybe that's what and ours a little, is missing. A little gazebo at the top. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's a that's a pretty fancy. I have sundial. to say that's a cool looking sundial. Yeah, I mean, why why does the Sutton sundial not have um, a climbing wall on it so that you can climb to the top? Exactly. They, they could do so much with it. But uh, yeah, I think the Sutton sundial obviously. We need to compete with these guys. Keep the original sundial, but build a bigger one next to it. Build a bigger one. <laughs> build a bigger one on top of it. We really like sundials, so let's build another sundial. Let's build five sundials. First town in history to have five sundials that are all big. Let's build a sundial in every settlement in Ashfield. We can be known as Sundial City. <laughs> we'll all join together. There'll be the Sutton Sundial, which will be the biggest. There'll be the Kirkby <laughs> Sundial, which will, you know, it'll be pretty big. Yeah, There'll we'll be, be the Huffweight Sundial, which will be the world's smallest sundial. <laughs> it's, it's, it's atomic, so, you know, you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it tells atomic time. It's... <laughs> And it definitely exists. We definitely built it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Ashfield District Council. Let's see some of the other comments. Um, Sherry Martin says, This area doesn't need changing. Outram Street needs investment to repair buildings or hold to account the owners to keep up standards. Fix the roads. They are a disgrace. We've already spoke about the roads. Yeah. Not really. Can't can't do much about them. Down to them. Make the green space next to as the petrol station a public park with water play for the kids. That'd be good. Yeah, because there's not there's That'd that cool. whole field of grass that mm. yeah, there's nothing on. It's right next to a school as well. Give startup businesses opening in the centre tax breaks as enticement to invest here. Or you know you've got seventy million pounds, just give them a bit of money. <laughs> Give them some Help development. Them the way. Give them investment. Um, yeah, entice them to invest here. Need to attract more entertainment. That's what we've been speaking about. That's we've said that. We need so a cinema often. or a theatre or Sundial an arcade cinema. or something. Something that can entertain people. A, a music venue. Yeah, that can entertain people of any age. Yeah. There's a big issue we've got is we've got plenty of pubs for older people. There's practically nothing for kids, aside no. from a few parks, which not every kid wants to go to the park all the time. 
No, and the thing with parks as well, outdoor play is fine, but when the parks are being used by um, perhaps undesirable people, you're not going to want your kid playing on the park. Yeah. Um, a, a, a business like a cinema could stop undesirables going in. <laughs> <laughs> undesirables. <laughs> And I, 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 I really think as as the Suttons would call them, yobbos. Yobbo. I, I do think uh, a cinema is it benefit. Any town with a cinema gets benefited by the cinema. So um, yeah, she goes on to say we need to attract more entertainment. We need local bands playing, food markets, outdoor seating, community events, which bring people to the area who spend money, like a tour de Sutton. Like a tour de Sutton. I like th- a mead festival. Well, I think I am um, like a, a, a food market. Like what uh, I, 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 I've i forgotten the name. Um, like what they uh, commented would be very good. Like there's a near York market. There's a whole food market adjoined to that. And you get food from all over the place. And people go there all the time. I know it's in a city, but... In certain people that go Here's a to question. a food market. Here's a question. The Sutton market is currently put around the sundial. Yes. With these new elevated patches of grass, where will the market now go? I did see someone comment that once, uh, but I did not see any reply to it. Because these plans don't seem very well thought out. No, For one, the, the artist impression seems to get the scale of Portland <laughs> Square wrong. I mean, the, the market was moved a few years ago. It was. From its original place. Which was a great place for it. Yeah, and, and people didn't really like that, but they've gotten used to it where it is now. Where are they going to move it? There's, they're not leaving much space. Imagine, you know, our Leicester-based viewers, if Leicester Market was... Um, torn down for a car park and the market was moved around the clock tower and then years later the clock tower gets painted grey <laughs> they removed the clock tower <laughs> they removed the for clock some first. elevated patches of grass and now the market's got nowhere to go it, it markets are an important part of towns i mean sutton is a market town it, it is markets or at least it was an important bit of the town and it, it it still brings people into it. I always see people shopping in the market or at the market. There's there's the indoor market as well. The indoor market's pretty good. But the outdoor market's pretty swag. Um, especially since the indoor market was uh, done up. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot nicer in there now. But um, I think the outdoor market needs to exist. Yeah. Whether they'd move it to the lawn, I don't know. I think it'd work on the lawn. Do you not? It could no. become like a car boot kind of thing. I say, yeah, it'd feel more like a car boot, but it'd be too out of the way. It's not, not near enough to shops. Yeah, but the lawn is only um, two minutes across the road. Ah, yeah, but you got to walk to the lawn. People will be like, ah, we'll just go into, we'll just go into one at shops instead. Hmm. So if they're, if they're in the town centre. Your town centre you should be where your market is. You could make that argument about Outram Street, that it's you know, two out of the way of the town centre. Outram Street's the main road out, though. Mm. It's it's like, if you're, it, well, if you're going that direction, obviously, if you're going the opposite direction, it's not, but it's it's the main road, so people have to go down there, essentially. The thing is, it always makes sense to have your centre of town have a central landmark to let people know this, this is, is the, the centre middle. of town. Yeah. Like, in Leicester, you know you're in the city centre... Because you can see the clock tower. Yeah. In York, um, that's a bit different in York, actually. Because the Minster, I don't think that's in the centre centre of town. But because it's a walled city, mm. kind of, the whole bit inside the walls counts as the city centre. Cool. So you're kind of like, okay, here I am. Because you see the massive wall. Here I am. Rock you like a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's read some of th- some more of these comments anyway. Um, again, on the Ashfield District Council's post. Katie Wilkes comments, So, 
Something that's supposed to be a landmark is getting taken away. It's been there for years. It's outrageous. It is outrageous. Um, Dave, Dave Jacques says, Ashfield District Council, what's the point of feedback when you never listen to the general public? Why waste monies on areas of Ashfield that aren't benefiting? Sutton will still look an eyesore with all the shops boarded up. Cheaper to put a bike lane straight through it. All the best <laughs> shops have closed in Sutton and it's only going to get worse. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of what we said, though. Invest more in businesses yeah. instead of destroying the sundial <laughs> for some grass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of local shops that we have, so not chain shops in Sutton. We had low price foods. Yeah, that's gone now. We've got Kings Exchange, but that's not on the centre centre. King, Kings Exchange is, is yeah, it's a pretty standard yeah entertainment exchange shop. I feel like that's been losing business. We, we've had Venus there for years. Venus? Venus Entertainment. Oh. Oh. I can't remember what that is. <laughs> I it's, think I've ever been in there. It's on, like, the side street as you come out the um, indoor market. Oh, is it that one with jukebox in window all the time? No, it's the, it's got, like, a yellow sign. It used to be really big. It, it had, like, a lot of games in it. Now it's more oh. just a repair shop. Oh, oh uh, yeah, I think I know what you're on about now. Yeah. <laughs> you used to be able to go in and look at the um, adult films... Oh, I bet you did that all the time, you. Top shelf. You did that all the time, you did. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I know where it is so well. (laughs) I I I used to go after school and um, (laughs) not not buy adult films, but you know I'd I'd buy like a game for the GameCube or something like that. Yeah, GameCube. GameCube. What is the best console? Wii U. The Wii U is the best console. Wii U. It has a um, built-in screen to the controller. What's better than that? Yes. Um, we have a message <laughs> from uh, one of our regulars here on Mead and Cheese, Ed Woodywus, who is the host of The Ed Show here on Demon FM. Hello, Ed. He says, I would also back keeping the sundial from a position of complete and absolute indifference. And that's that's how indifference should be taken. I mean, indifference, if you don't care about the sundial you shouldn't want it removed yeah you should want the money to go to areas that need it more exactly um which you know i think is the point that ed is making yeah um yeah so some of the other comments uh what a shame to get rid of the sundial says katie i agree um michael says What's the point doing this when we have the worst roads in the area? Again. Again, we, we've, we've yeah, spoken about the roads. There's not much that can be done with that. But yeah. still, the first part of that, <laughs> what's the point in doing it? Yeah. Yeah, what is what is the point? Um, a, another person, Becky, says, um, what a waste of money when all it needs is tidying and cleaning up. The space is used for market stalls, etc. Exactly. Have a permanent market instead of a fold-up market. <laughs> the roads are horrendous. Why not invest money into making them better? <laughs> I think people in Ashfield really want better roads. Um, maybe maybe that's the next campaign. And I think not County Council should probably... Fix the roads. Stop ignoring Ashfield. <laughs> that might be a good, good, a good idea. Yeah, um, Ashfield District Council did respond to that, saying, um, you know, the regeneration plans for Sutton Town Centre include a new space for the outdoor market. They haven't revealed what that new space will be. Yeah, but where is this new space? Where is it? They, they're they probably thinking to put it on Sutton Lawn. Let us know in full detail what your plan is. Please, Ashfield District Council, release the results of the poll. Release the poll results. Show us every bit of information about the removal of the sundial and its proposed new when was the square how did people vote what percentage of people voted for it to go what sort of people voted were they elderly were they young 
that's it. Because really, uh, you want to be thinking about the future. And, you know, if the old people want the sundial gone, but overwhelmingly the young people want it to stay. Yeah. You know, it's it's the young people who are the future of Ashfield. Well, you, t- attracting people to a town like Sutton, because there's not a lot of history that's visible, visible, you want to be attracting younger people. Because yeah. it's it's not really a town you can have a nice leisurely stroll around. It's a, it's a market town. It's where you go to buy things. Daniel says, if you take the sundial away, how am I going to tell the time? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. How how am I meant to tell the time with no sundial? Um, Denise says, we might drop in if we didn't have to go to work. Why couldn't you do it on a Sunday? Agreed. Why couldn't you do it on... You know, not, not the hottest, the hottest day. day of the year. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, oh, man. You need to ask the majority what we want, because it isn't what you want, exactly. says Paula. Thank you, Paula. I, uh, what? You need to ask the majority what we want, because it isn't what you want. The majority? <laughs> I've been interrupted now, but... <laughs> I think what the, yeah, the majority what she's want saying, what Ashfield Council don't want. Yeah, that's. Pro- I think that's what she's trying to say. Yeah, um, you know, the people of Ashfield. They say they did a poll, or people voted for it after they put in a bid. Yeah, I. My mum works in practical eyeliner of the sundial, and she's there a fair amount throughout the week, and she never noticed any polls had. Like taking place, I think the only thing Here's was a small bit of paper on a wall the thing, somewhere. Like Ashfield District Council, their head office is based in Kirkby. Yeah. Um, so maybe they p- asked people in Kirkby. In, in Kirkby <laughs> what do you think of the Sutton Sundar? What? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that sounds like something, something they might have done. <laughs> yeah. It really is a shame. Um, Alistair Brown commented. What? The sundial what? just needs to be used more. Dress it up at Christmas and Halloween. Have a race around Sutton annually using it as the start and finish point. Sell mini sundial statues or snow globes. Oh, That'd be great. Make the sundial the Eiffel Tower of Sutton in Ashfield. Removing it is pointless and stinky. <laughs> <laughs> the sundial also has songs written about it. It's a monument and shouldn't be removed. That guy sounds like he uh, he knows what he's talking about. He also sounds like he's pretty cool and maybe also funny. <laughs> <laughs> Claire says, um, I've never known a council waste so much money. People have worked hard to secure this grant, which could do so much good. The high street is rapidly dying, and removing the sundial isn't going to be proactive in reviving it. With a bit of thought and ingenuity, the money could make a big difference. Claire, run for council. Claire, you are clearly smarter <laughs> than most of Ashfield Council. <laughs> you know what needs to be fixed in Sutton. Yeah. I mean, that money, we have said throughout this whole show, it can be put to much better use than destroying the sundial and replacing it with grass. Yes, we've got grass all over. We don't need any more of it. I mean, I know, I know that I love grass. I know that some of these councillors who, um, you know, are desperate to destroy our history, <laughs> um, would like to touch grass. <laughs> but <laughs> they should probably touch grass a bit more, honestly. <laughs> but you know, they don't have to remove the sundial to do that. No, just put some grass around it. Just yeah, just go to Sutton Lawn, which is literally <laughs> across the road. <laughs> I don't know where this random hate for sundials has come from. Well, Heidi says, Just wasteful to me, the sundial is part of the history of the town. It could look better, but doesn't need taken away. Put the money in maintaining and keeping things clean, and Sutton would look far better. I agree, Heidi. You're, you're smarter than the majority of the council as well. <laughs> Heidi, yeah. you, you should, we should have some of these people in the council. <laughs> Maybe we just need some regular people in the council. Maybe we need... People that actually have to live in Sutton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Frank says, looking through this post causes genuine concern that this council treats the concerns of the people with total, total and utter contempt. The only replies of selected questions come under the name of Ashfield District Council in often a condescending manner, either pushing blame somewhere else, giving a website to complain to, and always ending things with thanks. But what would cause concerns on the latest reply is, Hi, aid. we are definitely removing the sundial, etc. Thanks. <laughs> Might as well just say, we will do what we want. This is not acceptable. Real questions and comments should be treated with real respect. Exactly. There's been huge uproar about the removal of the sundial. It's clear we don't want it to go. It's clear that there is a large majority, a, a, an overwhelming majority. An overwhelming majority. There, there is a substantial portion of people in Sutton who don't want to see the sundial go. And I'm curious, who was asked? <laughs> Release the poll results, <laughs> who, Ashfield District Council. Who asked Council. Ashfield Council? Who asked? Asked. I can't say that word at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Ashfield District Council um, responded to Chris, who asked about Hucknall getting some of the funding. Um, which Huck Hucknall, Hucknall needs yeah. more funding, Hucknall, I think. Yeah. Hucknall could do with some funding. And Hucknall is, of course, under the jurisdiction of Ashfield District Council. So they said um, the town's fund was secured for Sutton and Kirkby. We are in the process of submitting a £20 million levelling up fund bid for Hucknall, which will regenerate Hucknall Town Centre. Hopefully not by destroying it first. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll put some grass down. <laughs> Finally, we can touch grass. <laughs> I don't think I've ever... Hucknall's where trams are, isn't it? Um, Hucknall, yeah. Yeah, that's the only place I've been to in Hucknall. It's 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 the place I know where the, it's where you catch the tram to get into Nottingham. I've been Hucknall before, um, not for a very long time. <laughs> Do you think they've got any grass there now? I don't know, man. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe they don't have any grass maybe. anywhere in Ashfield, and that's why they're doing this. <laughs> maybe that's the maybe that's the whole issue. Mm. There's not not enough grass, too many sundials. Like, it's not like you're always a five minute walk away from big fields. <laughs> It's not like we're 10 minutes away from the Peak District. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so most of the comments on here seem to be, you know, yeah, against the council, which As isn't surprising. I think the majority of Ashfield is, regardless of what they're doing. Um, Lynn has put, see it gone, question mark. I recall the original post. Glad that someone does. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been taken down. And I recall that most people wanted it to stay. And most people felt it was a waste of money to remove it and replace it with something else. Lynn has the insider information. I also recall that people felt the money could be better spent in areas that we desperately need the funding, such as Outham Street. I, for one, am absolutely baffled by this decision. What exactly are you doing wasting money like this on pointless projects that bring us nothing in terms of actual regeneration and positive change for the area? I'm baffled as well. I am baffled that we don't have, you know, people with common sense <laughs> um, <laughs> in the making these decisions. <laughs> I'm, I'm supremely baffled by all of that. Outram Street needs rejuvenating because uh, half the shops down there are closed. So, um, Ashfield District Council responded to Lone. They said the plans for regeneration are not limited to simply removing the sundial. We will also remove all joy from the town. <laughs> no, we will also dig up Sutton Lawn <laughs> because we've already got some grass on Portland yeah, Square. We now. will get the grass from Sutton Lawn and turn Sutton Lawn into a giant stone car park. slab. <laughs> a car park. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big car. Car parks attract people that can park the cars. Yeah, we need more roads. <laughs> oh, wait, no, they can't handle that. They don't do the roads. <laughs> they don't do the roads. Um, no, they they really said the plans for regeneration are not limited to simply removing the sundial. As we have said, we will be sharing the plans soon so residents can have their say. Thanks. Lynn responded, this is, oh, this is great. Saucy. 
It looks like you have already decided what is happening, regardless of residents' opinions as per the video. Lynn, I 100% agree. Lynn, if reports are correct that they've already started removing the sundial, that is not a lot of time to get public opinion exactly. they, on the new they, plans. They, they, they started doing it, what, five days after they said, uh, on Monday you can come and have a talk, because uh, didn't you get told on Wednesday? Uh, when did they put the video up? I, I they put the video up in, in a minute. A while ago, and that was them saying, then on Monday the 18th you can come and talk to us about it. And then, mm. uh, on, I think it was on the Wednesday, you told me that... Um, I'll find out the been. exact dates in a minute, but yeah, Lynn, 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 Lynn. Because that, that was the day I took the, what could be one of the final bits of footage of the sundial. But yeah, Lynn said, you know, it looks like you've already decided what's happening regardless of residents' opinions. You really need to involve people more. We have to live here. We have to walk past the empty shops. We have to keep replacing suspension coil springs in our cars because the roads are that bad that you cannot <laughs> avoid the holes. Again, <laughs> Again that's Lynn, not Ashfield District Council's. Lynn, I appreciate that, but please talk to Notts County Council about that. <laughs> <laughs> that they, they do the roads. We have to live with the dog crap everywhere and the litter, which the residents pick up themselves to try and tidy the area. That's true. When I see litter around... Sutton, or even here in Leicester, I'll I'll pick it up and throw it in the nearest bin. Exactly. You want to you want to make the place you live in look nice. Yeah. Which is why you, sh you shouldn't get rid of the sundial. Hmm. Um. So so we spoke about them replying to someone called Aid earlier, saying we're definitely removing it. Thanks. <laughs> um. And someone else is saying they have replied to Aid, saying they are definitely removing it. <laughs> Replying to you saying different. So it's either we're definitely removing it, or you can give us your opinion soon. I think we can give them our opinion. But they're they definitely removing they're, they're it. They're not going to listen yeah. to it. When an overwhelming majority of people say don't remove it. Marie asks, so can we choose to keep the sundial then? That, that, I, I, that is I, a good question. I would assume so. You... In, you know, a council really should be listening to what the people want. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the council serves the people. And, you know, they didn't release the poll to this vote, the vote that they did a few weeks ago. Yeah. And had an uh, overwhelming when majority. Did you do, when did you do this poll? Oh, a couple of weeks ago. When, when exactly? Oh, just a couple of weeks ago. Who'd you ask? Uh, I can't remember, a couple of weeks ago. That's like me lying um, on like some coursework. Like, oh, when did you um, ask the people for this? Uh, c c last week. week. Yeah, c a few weeks ago. I, I asked them, like, I don't know, at the start of term. When did you complete this bit of, like, oh, I did it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. When you actually did it the morning of. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, the... Um, the councillor, Matthew Ralph, again, maybe just looked in the mirror and said, should I remove the sundial today? Yeah, sure, go on Yeah. Then. I asked <laughs> myself a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not saying for sure that, that, that councillor Ralph did this. I've, I've not met the guy. I'm sure he's lovely. Say, I'm, I'm sure everyone's... I'm sure most of them are lovely people. <laughs> I'm sure a few... One of them's got to be nice. Well, you know... The, <laughs> There, there will be there will be councillors who are nice. I, I yeah. know so, I know some councillors like the councillor in my area. She she's quite a nice lady. Yeah. But um, th the council itself is making baffling decisions. Proper baffling. Well, into um, our council, it's one of the councils that takes the most amount of money just for itself. That wouldn't surprise me. So I'm pretty sure there've been reports on that. And like. Uh, well, there's Big been many double BC. There's been many scandals of like councillors not paying council tax. Yeah, and there's that one Ashfield councillor that beat someone up. There was, yeah. <laughs> he, he, um, we're not going to name names on here. No, I can't remember his. Name. <laughs> I, I can remember his name, but uh, yeah, he he got in trouble for beating up a political rival. Uh, look, you can look that up uh, if you want to. Yeah, we're not going to go into say, too it, much it, detail. It's on the news. Um. Yeah, uh, Steve Abbott says this is fake news because Jay Z is not there with his arms folded. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Jay Z being um, 
Jason Zadrozny, <laughs> the leader of Ashfield Council. <laughs> Jay-Z. I've never heard him called that before. <laughs> mm. True. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're removing the sundial. This is a big thing that, you know, the, the leader should be involved with. Yeah. And he's off on his holidays. Well, he's, he's, he's recently gotten married, so he's on his honeymoon. Um, yeah, so why not just wait for a bit so to, to do this whole sundial thing? You know... Until he's back. The councillor Ralph, who is the head of regeneration, regeneration. and corporate whatever it was, <laughs> um, <laughs> he's kind of taken charge, I assume. I say, what, what if it's his brainchild? Maybe it is. He grew up hating the sundial. Natalia says, what harm is the sundial doing? Absolutely none. It is there and removing it will cost more money. Who are these people who hate it so much? Would love to know who was actually asked about removing it. Honestly, the sundial is fun and one of the only interesting landmarks in our town. Some people would rather just see the town centre being a giant car park. Eyes rolled emoji. Oh yeah, I Why agree. not just do something more interesting with it? Move it if it's in the way, paint it with interesting colours, or arrange plants around it. What have we been saying this entire show? I mean, that's exactly what you said, isn't it? Just do more with the do sundial. Do more with the sundial. Oh, it's man. It makes me eye rolls emoji. <laughs> <laughs> it really, it really does make me eye rolls emoji. Um, Amanda says, "I agree. At least we were known for having the largest sundial in Europe." Exactly. And Marie replies to that, "Yeah, it's." Sutton's only claim to fame. Leave it alone, please. We do have a few other claims I mean, to fame. Yeah, we've, we've got Jeremiah Brandra. Just nobody knows about that. <laughs> who was the last man to ever be publicly beheaded in England. I think he was whole of UK, maybe. Mm. He was definitely one of the very, very, very last. Yes. Well, he was definitely the last in England. But we've got the whole coal mining industry, and um, there are uh, hosiery. We're big on hosiery as well. I think we've got one of the largest, or I think the biggest, uh, England or UK based. Uh, I think it's a hosiery company. They do like women's stockings and stuff. The largest yeah. one of them is based out of Sutton. It's not there anymore because it moved to a bigger factory somewhere. So you know, from from what we've been reading, a, a lot of people weren't asked. Yeah. And um, don't support the decision. <laughs> like Marie, who says, I wasn't asked. I personally love the sundial. Getting rid of it is like when they removed the clock at Kirkby. A waste and removal of part of our community. It's a part of Sutton's history. Exactly. 27 years. Also, reading the comments, actually, most people want it to stay. Question mark. So who did you ask? <laughs> That's what we want to know, Ashfield. Ashfield District Council. Reveal the poll. Exactly. Exactly. And um, Natalia responded to that with, I totally agree, I love the sundial, and it represents Sutton's history of watchmaking. It's not totally random, and it's such a fun talking point when people ask about the time. The time, the town. <laughs> I mean, when they ask about the time, you might tell them about the sundial as well. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, <laughs> Go Sutton Sundar. Let me just pop over to Sutton real quick. But no, yeah, Natalia is right. Um, when people ask about the town, it is a fun talking point. And she says, why remove something that so many people love? Exactly. Exactly. Don't get rid of the sundial. Build around the sundial and fix up the bits of Sutton that actually need fixing up. That would be the common sense approach. We're talking about... We're talking about Ashfield talking District about Council. Ashfield District Council yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> I, I think it's time that we play the new hit single from the Nithercots, which uh, is about this campaign once more. So this is Save Our Sundial by the Nithercots. Bobo Nithercot, he can't. He can't. <laughs> I love that.
I, I love that too. It's 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 perfect. Perfect ending. It really is the perfect way to end a song. Just have a, a really loud organ <laughs> smash followed by a guitar strum and Bob saying, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I didn't know they removed Kirkby clock. That makes me quite mm. sad. It was a nice looking clock. It was a nice looking clock. And I think, you know, Ashfield District Council, if you have been listening into this show... Which I hope you have been. Which I hope a lot of you have been and taken notes. Yeah. Um, you know, start listening to the people. And, um, you know, stop removing landmarks. <laughs> <laughs> stop making everything look more boring than it already does. Why remove parts of our history that people love... When money can be spent on areas that actually need development. Exactly. I Removing these landmarks don't make the town look any better because you're not replacing it with anything that looks nicer. No, it's very true. And, you know, money should be invested in trying to attract more entertainment yeah. to Ashfield. Like, you know, a cinema. Yeah. Or, you know, investing in businesses. Yeah. Doing up the market. Exactly. Maybe, you know, refurbishing the sundial. Yeah. Making make it, it look nicer. Not dull grey. <laughs> <laughs> Paint it rainbow colours. Yeah, you could do like a monthly theme with the sundial. You Paint could... it like a unicorn, have the top <laughs> bit of it with a unicorn on. But no, you could like paint it rainbow for Pride Month. Yeah. Um uh, have make make Ashfield month. Paint it green for Christmas and cover it in Christmas lights. Put a star on top. Yeah. Put a star on the tip of Hallow- the sundial. Halloween. Put um, a big pillowcase over it. It's a ghost now. <laughs> 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 you know what I would do for Halloween, actually? I would um, just paint the top part of it yeah. brown. Put, like, a... A witch a, on it. Yeah, put a witch on it. Which put, is like, broom. a mop end. Yeah. <laughs> At the, at the bottom of it's the a witch fire around. Yeah, you got a witch in the middle of Sutton Town Square. Spooky. 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 Halloween themed. They would look so cool. Yeah. How many other towns are going to have a witch on a broom elevated above the town square? Uh, and not just any witch on a broom, a big witch on a broom. The Wicked Witch of Lemo. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> not the Wicked Witch of Lemo. We played um, The Witch's Familiar. <laughs> earlier actually on the show which was an ode to the Wicked Witch of Lemo very scary very scary I don't even know if they exist the the part where it went death <laughs> death <laughs> death <laughs> great lyrics oh lyrical genius that but yeah um, I, I don't know what I would do if I was in the the councillor's sh- shoes I'd probably listen to the people but probably <laughs> But I mean, you know, you've got £70 million. Pounds. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. What do you do with that money? Not destroy the sundial. I know I definitely wouldn't do that. Take it and run. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe. And, uh, maybe. I, I, I'd do up Idlewells. Yeah. Turn Idlewells into the Four Seasons to, to eight, eight Seasons. Eight Seasons, featuring Frankie Valley. <laughs> Invite him to come and do the opening ceremony. That'd be great. I'd probably clean up the streets. Yeah, clean up the streets. Maybe um, I, I would have definitely, a go at Notts County Council about yeah, the roads. I'd definitely invest in a, a cinema or a theatre of some sort. So would I. To attract either moviegoers or, like as I said earlier, how we almost had Roy Orbison in Sutton. Well, you look at the, um, you said about the YMCA building as well, yeah. and, you know, that's it's not a very big building. No, that, but, it's, but it's it's a decent size. Big enough for an arcade. I'm gonna say, yeah. Something for the kids to do. Exactly. De- 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 there's desperately got to be something for kids to do after and they get out be, of school. be something for the older nerds to do, too. Like, exactly. put some Pac-Man machines yeah. in there, and, and Dig Dug, and I'd Donkey turn it Kong. into, like, an uh, arcade cafe. That'd be great. An arcade cafe in the middle of Tut- Sutton Town. It it works so well. Arcade cafes have been on the up and up There's over one in the Manfield, past few years. And that does pretty well. Closed down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I closed down a couple of years ago. Uh, but there's there's one um, 
one's been introduced in York. I've not been in it yet, but uh, it looks pretty decent. But have, having a place where the kids can go and play a game and the parents can go and chill and have a coffee and a nice sandwich. Well, maybe the um, the one in Mansfield wasn't in the most prime location. It, it was. It was, and it was also a five-minute walk from a McDonald's yeah, and the Burger King and a KFC. <laughs> And it also wasn't in the centre uh, in no. Mansfield. Like, if you caught the bus, you'd then have to walk back the way you came to get to it. Yeah. I also but, don't know if they just moved. But with the YMCA building, that's like a two-minute walk from the school. Yeah. It, not even that. It's, it's right around the corner. It's, it's right down It's right around the corner from yeah. Idlewells as well. It's, it's right next to Idlewells. It's right next to Sutton Centre School, Sutton Community yeah. Academy. Um, and it is right down the road from the sundial. Yeah. And it's right next to the big town car park as well. Well, both yeah. of the town car parks, actually. It's right next to both car parks. It's a, it's an optimum spe- position to attract a bunch of people into it. And this is the thing. If rent prices are getting too high in Sutton, as some people have suggested, yeah. you know, you can use that money to give those businesses some breaks. Yeah. Incentivize people to actually come to Sutton. But that's what we would do what if would, we were in the council. What would, what you, would, do? What would you do? Let us know on our <laughs> Mead and Cheese socials. <laughs> this has been Mead and Cheese. Mead and Cheese. The hashtag Save, Save Our Sundial special. I've been DJ Mead. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've been myself. <laughs> Joined by Sutton and Ashfield local Alistair Brown, also known as Apollo Nithercott from the band The Nithercots. We are going to play it one more time. Decent. Save our sundial, followed by Sutton Sundial, the, the greatest, greatest landmark in, in the world. world, followed by another ode to the Sutton Sundial. What do you think of that? Pretty swag. This has been Mead and Cheese on Demon FM. Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs>